Hello, I'm Delusion Dispeller, and we are on day, where is it, day 20, recommit to Jesus. Um, some narcissists claim to already know Jesus, but then some of them claim to be Jesus, so it just depends on the narcissist as far as where they're at in their spiritual life, and I've never really known a true malignant narcissist. That wanted anything to do with Jesus, religion, or any other person or being controlling them. So that's kind of a moot point on that one. 21, day 21. Read the Bible and consider the promises of God. Again, narcissists are not notorious unless they can use religion or spirituality or hyper-spirituality to further their cause of getting attention. Then some of them will proclaim themselves to be prophets or leaders of some kind in the church. Um, then that might, you know, pique their interest. But it's not going to change their narcissism. Nor is it going to improve your marriage. Because I have talked to people that were married to narcissists that claim to be, for instance, Christian. And they used that as a cover in public. So that behind closed doors when they were abusing their wife or their husband... Um, nobody would believe it because in the public eye, they saw this perfect, quote unquote, Christian person or perfect godly person or Mormon person or whatever they claim to be. And they didn't believe it. They were like, we don't understand. He gives to the church. I mean, you know, they're, they give to charities and they're like great in the public eye. And, you know, he drove me home from church that one day when I didn't have a ride. So I, I can't believe that you're saying you know, he says these mean things to you at home or whatever. So spirituality is just another way for them to cover up who they really are behind closed doors. Um, day 22. Hopefully I didn't say that other one was day 22. This is day 22. Um, it's kind of the attitude of I love you even if you don't choose to love me. Hmm. Well, being that I was married to a narcissist, although I don't know if he was a malignant narcissist, he might have been. Having that attitude, I choose to love you even if you don't choose to love me, makes you feel really good as the person doing the loving. But again, it's not going to evoke love from somebody that doesn't have love to give. Somebody can't give you what they don't have. And I've said that in other videos. If you're expecting your narcissistic spouse, in this case husband, to reciprocate when you're loving and cuddling and trying to get, you know, some type of affection from them. And even if you're not, and you're just thinking, well, I'm in a marriage, so he should love me, he should do these things. You doing it to them is not going to evoke that response from them. Because when you do anything good for them, they feel entitled. They deserve it. So, again, you know, of course she's going to hug me. Of course she's going to kiss me. She adores me. What woman wouldn't? That type of attitude. So, yeah, that probably won't work in your favor as far as improving your marriage. Um, number 23, day 23, watch out for parasites. Look for the addictions and the things that are causing problems or could cause problems in your marriage. So, for instance, um, many narcissists will have addictions like pornography, alcoholism, drugs, gambling, whatever. So you're supposed to look out for those things and try to protect your marriage from them. Well, you can't control another adult human being. So if you're thinking you're going to all of a sudden get him to stop gambling or stop watching porn or stop doing whatever he's doing, it's not going to work just because you want it to. Um, and you can... Throw out his girly magazines. You can knock off the uh, porn channel on the computer or on the TV. And all that's going to do is get him angry and tell you that, you know, you don't trust him. What's the matter with you? You should trust him more. And you're so insecure and you're so wimpy. And girl, get a backbone. You know, you can't prove that I'm doing any of this stuff anyway. So it's just your paranoia. You're just paranoid and suspicious, and you don't trust me. And you should be ashamed of yourself. That's the kind of reaction you'll get from that. Um, day 24. It says, kill all lust. I'm not exactly sure how to even mention this regarding a narcissist. Um, some of them love 
the sexual arena and some of them don't. Uh, many of them use it to woo you and then they'll go and do it with every other woman just to watch you squirm. So killing lust, um, that's something that's an individual thing. If you're having lust and you're in a marriage, obviously your needs aren't being met. So, you know, that's up to you what you do with that, whether you decide to end things with that person and move on or you do other things to meet those needs, which we won't get into that here. Um, the point is, this is supposed to improve your marriage by getting rid of this lustful thing, getting rid of these longings that you both have. Narcissists, from what I understand, a true malignant narcissist doesn't have any genuine sexual feelings anyways, so it's just used as another tool of manipulation and control over you. So I don't know how you would really kill that, because that's their main tool. You could refuse them, and that will just evoke anger. And that will get them to say you're a lousy wife and I don't know why I ever married you. You won't meet my needs. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So that won't work. Um, day 25, forgive them. Well, hmm, forgive them. I don't see anything wrong with forgiveness. I think it sets you free. Um, it's not going to change their behavior. It's not going to improve your marriage by forgiving them as far as their actions towards you because... Unless they break free of the narcissism, they're still going to be a narcissist, whether they're a forgiven narcissist or an unforgiven narcissist. They're still going to be a malignant narcissist, and that is not going to change things. Um, day 26. Admit your flaws to your spouse and ask forgiveness. Oh, just again, why don't you just put a target right on your chest or on your back. You're going to go to them and say, you know, I have all these things I need to confess to you. I have done this and such and everything else, blah, blah, blah. Will you forgive me? They're going to just look at you and laugh. They're going to say what an awful, terrible person you are. Um, you need to get over your stuff. You need help. Oh, that's their favorite one. You need to go for therapy. I told you you were crazy. Now you just admitted it. You told me all this stuff you did. You're nuts. Don't you see how crazy you are? you got to be blind not to see that. You know, I'm going to talk to your friend and see if we can get you committed to this place. I mean, that's just going to open you up to more harm. So don't go there. Um, don't ever admit your flaws to a narcissist. Okay, day 27. Admit your unrealistic expe expectations to your spouse and apologize. I am so sorry, honey. I have had unrealistic expectations of you. I really thought that when I asked you to pick up that stuff from the grocery store, that I should expect that of you. I should have never expected that of you. I know you're busy. I know your schedule just doesn't allow you to...